Anyway, let's call this regular monthly meeting to order, please. The Scarborough Sanitary District it is February 27, 2020. All right, roll call. Jason Greenlee. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Ruth Summers. Here. Paul Rodriguez. Here. All right. Joe has called to let us know he won't be able to attend, and Judith also has an excuse. Joe is optimistic that he will be here, but when he ah, Okay, and once we finish early, then that's no chance. So approval of the minutes. Move approval. Thank you. Any seconds? Second. All right, any questions, concerns, edits, comments, revisions? There are none. All in favor? And one abstention. One abstention. All right, thank you. Um, before we get to the superintendent's report, I'd like to suspend the rules and ask for a motion to add another item under new business to discuss solar energy. So moved. Second. Thank you. We'll put them on uh, ahead of the on call. All right, now, superintendent's report, please. Copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of January is included in your packet. Our average flow for the month was 1.61 million gallons a day. Our home quality was well within our permitted limit. And we average 92 and 98 percent removal for VOD and TSS with concentrations at 16 and 5 milligrams per week. Copy of the pump station flow for the month of January is also included in your packet. As noted, there were several errant flow months due to power outages. Also on the 28th, there was a significant rain event that caused a high flow at station number two. On the 28th of January, I met with the homeowner uh, of uh, 7, Avenue 7 um, uh, to discuss the causes and solutions of the frequent blockages that they have experienced there over the last number of years. At this meeting, both Jeff and John Thurlow were present along with the general contractor, uh, the owner, operator of Eco Queen, Mike Shaw, Public Works, Glenn Delapro, John Kennett, and myself from the district. It was generally agreed that the service to the house needed to be relayed and the backwater valve installed. Eco Queen was going to be providing an estimate to do this work for the homeowner of this place. Uh, Willett and Associates uh, completed their on-site work um, for the an our annual audit on Monday, uh, February 17th. Wendy was uh, kind enough to come in on that holiday day and work with them. Uh, they will be completing their report this month and presenting their findings to the board. Hopefully, at the next uh, board meeting, if they're done in time. Uh, we met with Hoyle Tanner and Associates to view the asset list that they developed for the plant and pump stations and their continuing to work on that project. On the 6th of January, I taught at Maine DDP's operated training school. The subject covered was preliminary treatment. And on the 11th of February, uh, Nick Rico and I joined John Hart, uh, Gordy Smith, and Rob Pontal from Brunswick to conduct a jet sea class on navigable processes. Um, uh, Rudy Dale and John uh, Michalski attended a dig safe training course at the uh, North Wastewater Treatment Facility. And um, two other items. Carl has uh, received the micrologic controllers that we have budgeted for the uh, uh, upstation control panels to replace obsolete equipment. And it has uh, received the VFDs that we have budgeted for replacement in and around the plant. And that is my operations report. All right. Any questions, comments on the operations report? All right. Correspondence. Attached is a copy of the inspection report from uh, DEP that they conducted in De uh, December of, of the treatment plant. Uh, it was conducted by Matt Height, our uh, inspector. As well in the summary, the operations and maintenance of the facility. We also have a rough report, which you very rarely gives uh, pretty excellence in the categories. So it was uh, a good report on, on 
is what we have. Um, on Power Products, attached is a copy of an email I sent to Power Products, as noted in my email, the generator from pump station number eight, the thing that we just started up today, uh, was inadvertently dropped by the shipping company as it was being delivered to the uh, district. The, the damaged unit, as noted, to the, uh, to an, is to an extent that I advise them that I will, was unwilling to accept the um, the unit, even if refurbished and an extended warranty provided. I'm still waiting to hear back from our products uh, concerning the status of this item. They haven't received any money from us. In conjunction with the annual audit, uh, Mr. Rico received the attached letter slash questionnaire from what Ms. Oates. Um, we received this letter every year, and it's regards to uh, uh, asking the chairman if he has any concerns regarding risk or fraud, attached to a copy of Mr. Rico's responses, in which he noted he had no concerns. None whatsoever. Good question regarding the generator. How long until we can get a new one? They're usually uh, 8 to 12 weeks out if they have to order anymore. Is it on order currently? That I don't know. I was waiting for a response from them. The, uh, I think I'm going to check that. Are there other sources that we could potentially look to? to sort There's of other providers, yeah, that we could go on to. Yeah. Uh, there was the, uh, when we went out to get that uh, bids on it to like, get the other firm that provided it, they were worth a hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars of each other. But. That was a big noise. Yeah. Slid off the uh, flat bed. Mm. Um, Almost reason we should not be taking delivery of that unit. <laughs> the driver looks up and goes, I guess I should just load it back on the truck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes, you should. So, how did it slide off? They, they delivered it during a snowstorm and they, I don't think he must have had the a cable freewheeling, and when he tipped up the truck, the thing just started sliding on the snow that was on the on the bed, yeah. and it just it didn't stop. Didn't <laughs> stop, and as it was sliding, it started to rotate, and then came down, you know, wideways, hit the, the pavement, and just rolled right on over. We looked inside of the whole, you know, the whole generator is kind of cockeyed, about ten degrees. Throw your body in front of it to catch it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Superman, though. He's dedicated, but not that dedicated. <laughs> Everyone just sort of stood there and watched, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Poor driver. Yeah, he's a young kid, too. Well, that's what I think I saw him with the adults. Career change. Yeah. Okay, uh, there is no old business, so let's go into new business on the solar energy issue. All right, so this uh, past week I received um, uh, our, our consultant that we utilize for going out the bid for power um, uh, reached out to me and has you know, asked if we were interested in having them conduct a study for us. The cost of the study would be $25, <coughs> dollars. but there's a, uh, um, it, I guess with the new regulations that are out there, there's an opportunity to join, a, I'm going to call it a consortium, I've never been a terminology before, where we can um, join this group. Solar power, solar energy farm will be built someplace else. We have nothing to do with the purchasing, the building, or the land, or where it's located, or the operations of it. They're just using our energy demands to justify the building of the solar power and we get energy credits for it. Um, potential uh, from the initial flyover, high flyover, it looks like we could save up to $20,000 a year um, and maybe a little more beyond that if we start selling back our credits. So they, they're asking if we're interested if, uh, for them to do a study 
Uh, the cost of the study is $2,500. It was something that wasn't budgeted for, but I think we have the, re the uh, revenues available. Um, I don't see that, the, the cost of it being available, uh, an issue. Um, and actually, if we do move forward with it, we'd actually receive the $2,500 in, in a credit in future, future costs. So in order to get ahead of this, I wanted to bring this in front of the board right away and they could at least get the study moving. And, and if we decide to move forward with it, we would be in the next group of mm -hmm. uh, uh, that it proceeds with the project. And so Brunswick is, is part of the first Yes, year. they're looking at uh, what's called the power purchase agreement. So you can have a solar array either in your backyard and have it what they call behind the meter where it goes directly to your facility. Or if you don't have the land, you say, okay, we want to buy the supply of our power from this um, facility. So facility. it's like... Cho choosing who your supplier is for your electricity. CMP delivers the electricity in Southern Maine, but we all have different suppliers. We can choose whatever supplier we want, depending upon what the price is. Uh, the consultant Dave refers to, CES, they go out to bid for suppliers, and um, then we enter under contract with those suppliers for a certain period, be it 18 months, two years, three years, whatever. This power purchase agreement is similar to that, where we would enter into a power purchase agreement and say, our demand, we will need X amount of kilowatt hours per year. This is what we pledge to purchase from you. So they look at the amount of electricity that you're already using. That's what right. we're using. Yes. And they use that to, get, uh, to get credits for, it's all a tax game. Right. And I don't know well, the full... Part of it is, the way it works is, um, these solar companies have a group of investment investors, and these investors will invest in these solar farms, and they will benefit from tax credits because they're for-profit, which we aren't allowed to do because we're a non-profit. They will benefit from depreciation, and, um, and they get a steady stream of revenue. And I, I, want, I, want, I want to correct you on one thing. It actually does not impact our power purchase agreements. No, no, I'm sorry. I was yeah. trying to say it was similar to one similar of those. To because we, we already have contracts for purchasing power for a certain kilowatt, cost per kilowatt, and those actually remain in place. In the, yes, in, that's right. They're actually just using our demand really, from, my, from what I can see, to justify build, building this facility and getting all the credits that we got. Okay. Well, that's a little different than what I have, right? That's at, different. At my plan, have. I have a power purchase agreement where they built the facility right there on the site, and we use all the power we can, and anything we can't use goes right to the grid. Okay. So that, that's, a, that's, that's a different situation. Th this facility could be in Canada. Yeah, well, well, Brunswick, or yeah, yeah. Uh, the county, or yeah. but what they're trying to do is locate it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Locate it close to where the the users would be. You know, they try to get it geographically close, but it doesn't have to be right next to one. The electrons from that solar panel array may never see Scarborough Sanitary District or Brunswick Sewer District. But, but they're supplying. But they're they're supplying they're electricity. Feeding, they're feeding the grid. They're feeding right. the grid. That's right. So, so what does this study tell you? This study is going to really well. It's going to help um, lay out how much money we potentially could save based on the agreements that are out there. Um, so a couple years down the road, you could purchase. From, so they're saying, if you did solar for a portion of your electricity, mm -hmm. you could save this much mm -hmm. from your current electric bills. That's right. Return on investment. Yeah. Right. But you don't have to build the yeah, solar. Yeah. You're buying it from the yeah. yeah. all of that. Yeah. I mean, it's, kind of, huh. it's kind of like leasing a car, I guess. Uh, so it's a similar the first, <coughs> the first two, would they? Uh, the CES, uh, Constellation Energy, 
uh, will assist the client uh, in the identification and evaluation of a solar PV net energy billing credit, NEDC, opportunities to include any current proposals. CDS will assist the, with the subsequent contract negotiations with the selected bidder or proposers. Or proposers. Um, and then the third, which is not part of this, would, would be CDS will provide ongoing auditing and reporting of the uh, NEDCs received and developer invoices plus management of all renewable energy credits generated. So, um, and so the $2,500 would be step one and two. And if we decide, if the, if decide to move forward with it, um, step the $2,500 actually would go towards uh, uh, step uh, part three, which is the uh, the, the auditing that they do. Uh, so for the work, um, CES will retain 10% of the NEDC savings and 5% of the REC revenues of the term. So that's, that's how they that retain. So how do we get paid? Just that's a good question. I don't know. I don't have an answer. I literally got this email yeah. two days ago. So, um, and I think, you know, the evaluation that they are suggesting that they would do will help, I, you know, answer, that uh, answer those questions. Do we get a, a, a one check a year? You know, uh, in, this, in their initial, you know, Thousand mile flyover, you know. They're they're saying that the energy savings that we should see uh, should be about twenty thousand dollars a year. Any liabilities beyond that? Before beyond Does it, that? No, not from what I can see. So you that's know. how we get paid is by saving the twenty thousand. We get twenty thousand dollars. We would save twenty thousand dollars a year in energy savings, and then there's actually a potential of even saving more with the. Um, <coughs> Uh, NED credits if we're, if we're able to sell, sell them. There's a big push now for the EP to get these solar things approved. This, I don't know, we have 15, as of this week we have 15 and there's like 30 more coming in. Are you back working there? Yeah. Started, I started at the end of January. <laughs> Where are you working? Uh, Department of Environmental Protection. Oh. That's where I used to work. And they, <clears throat> so the person it was in the Augusta office that did what I did, left to, to go to DOT, and they didn't have to hire anybody. So they, Aubrey? No, Aubrey works in Portland. Oh, that's okay. where I'm working in Portland. But one day a week they have to drive up to Augusta to, to service the Augusta area. So I'm getting projects with Southern Maine and Augusta. So most of them are solar projects like this. And it's just uh, it's a big rush to build these solar projects. Well, this. I mean, we need, uh, Gary Mills has changed a lot of the funding that yeah. are available out there, which has made this type of project attractive for investors. So, but we wouldn't be any the liability because we have to um, <clears throat> provide a bond so that um, when when it's all done, when the, when they finish up with the project and they've got all the energy they're going to get, then they they have to uh, dismantle it. So they own and haul it out. Haul it out. Yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> So that's going to be a problem. I think they should that's do that for Kmart's and, and Walmart's. <laughs> well, but that's uh, like what? Say that again. Years? They have to haul them out when well, they're done. The, well, you have to have the, uh, the final assembly uh, the of, of the solar panels. Because there only is a light to those. They don't want them abandoned in place. Yeah. And they, 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 the investors just to walk. And okay, leave. so the life of what part of it? The inverters, which All of have a shorter lifespan than the panels themselves. Well, yeah, but you replace the inverters. Why wouldn't you just replace the panels? Uh, who knows what the technology would be in the future? And the tax incentive may not be able to justify it. But anyway, let's face it, the people we won't be around twenty five. So I guess the question is, do we want to do we want to get in on this for twenty five hundred dollars? Uh, that's the question. That's of the, the day. question that's what he's hand. asking. <coughs> so and you recommend? I you, recommend that we yeah. should move forward. I mean, it, there have been times I've been sitting here and I've looked at solar power yeah, at the at plant. We've looked at it a couple times, and I can't make it work at the plant. 
I've, I have been following this situation, you know, this new development. Method, yes. Um, as of late, and um, you know, it looks like something where it is it, it is cost effective for the district. I mean, and and you know, for the cost of twenty five hundred dollars, I think uh, it'd be worth determining whether it's going to save us twenty five hundred. Save us the money or not, or if there's risks that we don't know about, it will give us a, that that opportunity to ferret it out. Yeah. It's more it's more like negotiating a power option. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about reliability, which we could potentially if we have a solar array that's feeding our own plant. We don't have to mull around it. Right. <laughs> These things are important. Yeah. They are important. <laughs> that's what the goats are for. <coughs> yeah. That's a fine print on the bottom. So, but anyway, I would. So you need a motion from us or just need a motion? I'm, I'm, that's yes. my recommendation. Yes. Somebody either a motion for it and vote it down or. I will entertain a motion to move forward with the study at the very least. Uh, based on the superintendent's recommendation, yes. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second. Any more questions, discussion? I, um, I would just say that my employers looked into this as well, and I think the numbers um, make a lot of sense. But obviously, the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. And it's about what power level you want to buy into, and there's a long term agreement, I, I would expect. Yeah. And if it's the same type of thing. I'm sure it is. But the numbers make a lot That's of sense, right. so I'm, I'm definitely in support of it based on what I've seen so far. But I know all these contracts are different. So, but definitely supportive. It's a good idea. And just for those that don't realize that we in the wastewater and water industry, we need the full four to five percent of the country's power to operate. That's why they go after folks like us. Because yeah, we're it's it's a big percentage of what we use in this country and there's a reason they're looking at us because we have a high demand. You know, and Scarborough is a small plant compared to Portland, which has the largest treatment plant in the state, yet they also operate two or three more. Um, and that's just the wastewater side. Then there's the water plant by Spigley, the and they use a fair amount of electricity as well. I think they mentioned that they're working with one of this money. I can't see the plant anymore. It's a conversation I had with them. Oh, yeah. We were working with Portland Water District, Scarborough Schools, and about two dozen of the public organizations. Okay. Okay. Any more questions from the superintendent? All in favor? None opposed? Thank you. Pleasant Hill School? No. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry, on call truck. I didn't wear my glasses tonight. Well, they had a party and nobody came. And they sent the bids out to I think eight or ten different uh, dealers and um, had conversations with them. And they were all come by and take a look at the truck. And nobody showed up and nobody came to the bid. So, today I went out to Pete and sat down and he was one of the uh, dealers that I was uh, working with and um, they actually have a truck on their lot that meets uh, our demands which uh, basically a uh, Chevy Colorado four-door four-wheel drive work. And, uh, the finished price is uh, $31,376.50 and that's about $5,000 off of the um, sticker price uh, that he came back with. I also uh, brought the, um, the on-call truck uh, as a trade-in. 
uh, as an option, and they came back with uh, eleven thousand five hundred dollar value for the trade in on the, on the truck. Uh, my gut on the trade in was around twelve to fifteen. Uh, and Carl actually did a little research on it, and he actually, depending on condition and what have you, uh, he his what he found on the internet was between eight and eight and twelve. So I think both prices uh, are fair, and I'd like to move forward with uh, a Chevrolet to uh, purchase the truck and trade in the one that we have. With Guys. What's the current vehicle? It is a GMC 2.4 ton uh, 2013 GM 2500 service truck with a 5S. Okay. And you're going to a Colorado, which is a much smaller body? It's a much smaller body. Uh, we do the four doors, so we have an area that <coughs> Put stuff in if, if, under cover if need be. Um, the it's not used. You know we have a much bigger plow truck. Plow is a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. Consequently, this isn't even used half the time for plowing. Uh, that plow in the last two years has probably seen seen it twice. Mm -hmm. uh, this truck is new. Did you want to buy? Yeah, it's pretty new. Uh, the one that we have, uh, seven years old, and that's been our because at seven years we uh, tend to trade them at the price. How many miles on this? 100, on the one we're selling? Yeah. 109,000. That's pretty good. 10 years? Oh, seven years? Yeah. Yeah. Seven years. I did that last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> what, driving? Yeah. Oh, not far. I don't go far. So, uh, I just a motion. I know your, your concern is we're going down a much smaller frame. Yeah, I just, I just wondered why, um, why, why the reason, if it fits the need, I it understand. It fits the need. You know, talking to the, you know, I, I would replace it with another GM 2500, 2500. I really don't care. Yeah. Um, but in talking with all the operators, a much a much smaller, you know, like the platform of the yeah. I I questioned it because I thought you were going to need it for a plow. That's why I, yeah. that's not a vehicle you're going to be plowing. Yeah. You want an eight cylinder or six? No. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Ooh, <you> know. <laughs> that was like three trucks ago, man. <laughs> yeah. Jason bought a truck one time. And after he drew it, well, came to the realization that it was a six cylinder, not an eight cylinder. Yeah. What is this one? This is actually a six. 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 Smaller though. Right. It's just a standard work truck. And come to find out, GMC, uh, their equivalent, uh, what's that? that uh, Canyon. Oh, okay. The Colorado and the Canyon. Mm -hmm. GMC equivalent. Their work truck version does not come in full wheel drive. Really? You may go up the platform. That's just an off the mark, especially up here in Maine. You know, why you can get a pickup truck without full wheel drive? Yeah. So after and the training, could, what was the price after the training? Uh, I didn't do that. It's like 20 grand. Yeah, and which is well within our budget. And the, there was only five thousand dollars in rebates. I, I get things in the mail constantly. About ten, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars in rebates. Yeah, we buy the King Rancher. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, with an eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the work truck's pretty big, bonus. Yeah. yeah. So, you need a motion? Yes, please. Uh, I make a motion. We take the superintendent's recommendation and purchase that truck. Second. Any more discussion? Questions? All in favor? No opposed? You didn't consult Gary Howard on that, did you? I got that. <laughs> Although, you know, working with Gary over the last, over the last number of years, the number of bidders that we've gotten on vehicles like this has been much.
motion to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? So these are the bylaws here. Is there a typo about halfway through? The uh, sentence begins, the treasurer shall furnish bonds and the sum will uh, approve the cost thereof. Is that explained there? What paragraph? Uh, what section four? Section four, a little beyond four, halfway down. Cost thereof, yeah, that's a, that's a word. It is? Uh, I don't know if it's spelled correctly right, but then, we were shown these years ago. That's when you should have picked it up. Yeah. Uh, I didn't just the board then? <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> so you want to correct that now? That would be it, a good idea. I, I will, so I need a motion to correct the typo. I will correct it. I think the motion could be amended to correct it. Do uh, a spell check. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I will put this in front of Francine and have her review it. I don't think years ago I had the time to read it. <laughs> Good point. Or this time I did. Uh, any more discussion besides the typos? <coughs> All in favor? None opposed. All right. Joe by, Joe, by the way, in my conversation, said he supported the 630. Good. Good. So next month, <coughs> we better remember to be here at 630, not 730. Budget summary. One month budget summary is included in your packet. We recommend it approval. We are within budget. Well, motion to approve is read. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? All opposed? Not a real chatty group today, are they? Public comments. Well, I don't think we have any adult members of the public. <coughs> I think we're fine with that. Trustee comments? All right, let's start with you, Paul. Um, great job on the inspection, another great inspection from the DT. And a couple of E's are excellent, which is always impressive. Three, plus the Three. sentence. Plus the sentence, that's unusual. That is. Bizarre. I did speak the minute, though. Uh oh. <laughs> that's all for me. <laughs> ben, you're next. No, I did speak to Matt about the excellent thing, and he had his reasons. I didn't understand. So, uh, he says we have a great plan. Um, I think that's all my comments. Nothing. I'm just, I'm fascinated by it, but I can't wait to bring some kids on a field trip one day. <laughs> Jason, what's all supervision required? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll let go. Paul's comments regarding the inspection. Also, thank you to Wendy for uh, another audit. We shall see if it's successful, but I'm sure that it has been. And thank you for spending the extra time and the holiday down at the plant again. Doing some of our favorite things, but uh, thanks for all the work you put in. Um, I'll echo my fellow trustee comments. I applaud the three excellence on the report. Uh, thank you, Wendy, for taking that one home. And I'll entertain one more motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. All right. We're done. And that's the fastest you've moved all night. <laughs>